Good morning, everybody. My name is Corey Rosen, and you are listening to the Story Podcast. Today, I have on a super awesome guest, Mr. Dave Gates. In July of 2018, Dave's journey towards a career as a professional musician began when a homeless man gifted him a guitar outside an auto parts store. He practiced for hours every day and became a regular attendee of local open mics. In November of 2018, Dave's good friend and fellow musician, Wally DeWall, fell ill and asked him to cover a performance. Equipped with 40 cover songs and an itch to perform, Dave played his first paid show at Flinchies in Camp Hill, PA. He was further supported by his friends in the band Adrian Blitzer when they f- allowed him to open for their performance in December 2018, and the rest, they say, is history. Dave has performed over 600 shows since 2018, sharing the stage with some bands uh, such as Lit, Observe the 93rd, The Amish Outlaws, and many, many more. He regularly performs at bars, wineries, restaurants, breweries, and live music venues all over Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, and West Virginia. Dave released his debut original album, a five-track EP titled Feel All Right in February of 2020, and then he released the single Burn It Down in 2021 and plans to release a 10-track album in 2023 titled Home. Dave, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. So uh, you said that your your musical sh- journey started when when you got a, a guitar from a homeless man. Is that where your love for music started, or like performance wise, or? Um, no, no. So I uh, way prior to that, I was I was involved in choruses and and you know all the all the choir programs. Uh, I went to Susquehanna High School in in Duncannon, and they had a uh, like a traveling singers group called West Side Singers. Uh, like we went to Hawaii in 2001 oh, to, wow. to perform, uh, down there at like Brigham Young University. Um, and, uh, so I guess, I mean, I was always involved in chorus, um, and, and kind of singing, singing was my first love, you know? Mm. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean the, the music bug bit me early. I was, I was, and I've been all over the map on my music tastes, like from, from all the, you know, different phases of my life. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I've always had like a, a love more of the way that music moves people or or how, you know, a noise or a sound or a vibration can kind of inspire, um, you know, people to, to feel an emotion, mm. which is crazy to me. It's it's very weird that a, that a vibration can make people feel something. It, yeah, um, it's we had a whole conversation with a music therapist and, and she said music is the only thing that lights up all of our brain at once. Okay, well, that makes total sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it makes total <laughs> sense. It catches all of, all parts of our brain, which is crazy to me that that's the only thing that can do it. Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. So you started in chorus. Uh, do you go anywhere from there? I, I'm surely not. So, not really. I mean, it was it was my journey's been a very weird one to end up where I'm at right now. Uh, it didn't make sense when I was doing all the things, but it, it makes sense why I'm here now and like. Now that I'm here, I can look back and go, oh, well, that was for this and that was for that. Mm-hmm. Um, because, I mean, after, you know, I got to high school and kids, you know, kids aren't nice sometimes. So, uh, so you know, I, there were some kids that would poke fun at me for being in choir uh, and singing and stuff. And I let it get the best of me. Uh, you know, for a while, I thought that singing was like a. I don't know. Not cool. Not cool. Yeah. It wasn't. <clears throat> yeah, it wasn't cool anymore. So uh, so. I pretty much didn't sing uh, until I got uh, maybe 18, 19 years old. Uh, so like from high school till then. And then I started like getting involved in karaoke. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'd love going out and doing karaoke um, with my friend Tim. Uh, and uh, and he's you know, he kind of guided me through some of this as well. He was uh, I used to mow his lawn for guitar lessons when I was like 13. Uh, well, between 10 and 10 and 12. And, uh, and I would basically, I'd mow his lawn once a week and then he'd give me like a 30 minute guitar lesson. Uh, and that once again, whenever I fell off of singing, I just gave, like, I was like, okay, I don't want to play the guitar either. Like guitar Mm -hmm. playing. I mean, it it was cool, but I I wasn't good at it. So I was like, it's not cool when you're bad at guitar, you know, right? Yeah, (laughs) like it doesn't carry over. So, uh, so I, uh, so I just gave all that up. But then whenever we started doing karaoke, I realized how much I love to sing still. You know, mm. and and I loved 
kind of performing and entertaining a crowd and and I, I love the whole the whole thing of it and uh so I just did karaoke and then I decided to become a DJ uh so I started DJing um and that was that was right around the time I turned 21 uh and I just stopped doing DJ work in like 2016 um so that was that was a long period of my life and I wasn't a good DJ I I wasn't confident I didn't have any kind of stage presence or I, I was scared to talk on the microphone, which is horrible. So, yeah. That's not very good for DJ. It's not good. It's not good. Yeah. <laughs> so I would go to a wedding and I'd play, play music the whole time and do pretty much nothing else. And I'm like, this is not even the introductions. Oh, I would do introductions, okay, but say. I'd be shaking, like shaking the paper. Right. So I, uh, so I, at a certain point I was like, man, like I'm not a good DJ, you know? Uh, and I don't, I, I didn't feel good like charging people, let's put it that way, to do what I was doing. Even though people were paying me, I didn't feel good taking the money. Mm. It was weird. I was like, I don't feel fulfilled. Uh, I don't deserve this. Uh, I don't yeah, deserve right. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, uh, you guys could have somebody way better. So uh, so I uh, I was landscaping all throughout that time too. So I never just, just DJ. DJ was like a side thing. Right. And uh, so... 2016 or so i decided i was going to quit smoking cigarettes right and uh it, and it, that had been something i'd done for a long time and uh it's only pertinent to the story now looking back but so, so that's a that's a segue to have <laughs> it's very weird yeah yeah so 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 i quit smoking cigarettes and whenever i quit smoking cigarettes i was like all right well that let me know i could do anything mm. right like that it was such a life changing moment. Cause I had finally, I'm like, Oh, if I could do that, like this is where everything changes. Uh, so then I was also like 240 pounds at the time and I started working out. And then once I got that down, like, wow, I'm, you know, I was down a little bit of weight and I'm like, I've always wanted to try stand up comedy <laughs> for right, a guy right, that can't right. talk on a microphone to, to a crowd. I was like, I don't know at the time it still it, it still doesn't make sense to me now i mean I've, i love stand-up comedy but I, I i had one good set and then like six months of bombings mm. uh and i would go out to like weekly open mics and 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 all that and um during that time period i still felt like i was because i was trying something you know i felt like i was doing something and and it felt once again like i could do anything and I didn't realize at the time, the whole reason I think I did stand-up comedy now is uh, to get over my stage fright, to, to learn how to talk to people. It's very easy to talk to people whenever you've done like six minutes in like a nightclub in Baltimore, uh, six minute stand-up set and not gotten one laugh or one acknowledgement from the crowd for six minutes. Nothing's ever going to feel like that. Right. I don't care if I hit a wrong note. I don't care if I if if people don't. I don't care if they don't clap. I don't care what what happens. I, I don't need. It's it's like now it's just a. I can go up in front of, you know, hundreds of people or or five people, and it makes zero difference. And that would have never happened. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Had, had that six months of stand up not happen. Um, but yeah. So whenever the uh, the the. The six months of stand-up comedy during the, during that time, it was like July of 2018. I was like, "Man, this isn't it." Like, I'm driving to Baltimore on like a Tuesday night to do six minutes for free, mm -hmm. and then I get up the next morning and go to work at six o'clock in the morning. And, and I'm like, you know, it's a lot of times I was like, "This is," you know, I'll get like five, six hours of sleep somewhere in there, and I'm like, and I'm not getting paid, right? And and. And I wasn't good at it. I mean, I, I not not by my standards. Uh, and I'm sure if you stick with it, it develops. But uh, but I, I I kind of was looking for. I was like, all right, if this isn't it, like it's got to be something else. And I went to get stuff for an oil change on my car. And I was walking out of the Advanced Auto Parts store in Enola, Pennsylvania. And uh, and this homeless guy walked up to me. Well, he said he said, "Yo, Sublime." like four times and i'm like i don't even I'm like is he talking to me and i looked i was like oh i have a sublime t-shirt on i'm like oh yeah what's up uh so he walks over and he's got he's got a backpack on he's got like a pit bull and he's got this 
guitar in his hand, right? And you don't know what the heck's happening. <laughs> no, I'm like, all right, man. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what. The, he's, he's, it's, he's. It's three of the most random things you could ever have. Right, right, right. And he's a he's a he's a, a large black guy, and he has dreads, right? And he's got a cross tattooed in the center of his forehead. Oh wow. Mm hmm. So uh, a little strange. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about divine intervention, right? Right. So, uh, so he, uh, so he says to me, he's like, "Hey, man, listen, it's a lot. What I'm doing is a lot." I, I got the dog. I got my stuff. I got this guitar. He's like, and I'm thinking, yeah, like, what, what can I do, man? And he's like, well, can you take the guitar? He's like, it's just a lot to carry around. And I'm like, what? Like, uh, and I thought about it for a second. I'm like, man, I'm not going to just take your guitar. Like, I'll give you 10 bucks for it. And I figured even if I just throw the guitar away, it's all beat up, like right. nylon strings. The headstock has been snapped off and glued back on, right? All right. So, uh, so I'm like, all right, man, um, I'll take, I'll take the guitar, which I'm glad I did. Cause I, I was hoping he wasn't going to offer the dog. So I'm like, that dog doesn't look, it doesn't look nice. Uh, so, uh, so I get the guitar from him, give him 10 bucks. I go home and I'm kind of plunking around on it. And I'm like, man, I forgot. Like I kind of enjoyed playing guitar. Like I learned a couple and I was like strumming and it was horribly out of tune and, and everything. And I, I think that went on for like, a week and a half. And then, uh, then the, I decided the one day I looked at the guitar and I was like, this thing looks old, like old, old. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I just check it out online. So I, I go online and I type in the, the, uh, the serial number of this, this Yamaha guitar. And I find out that it's like a 1960 something 61, I believe Yamaha guitar. It's made out of, it's the only year they made, those guitars that acoustic guitar out of that type of wood there was some kind of i don't know what they call it but there was some kind of block on them using that wood after that so, so it's a rare guitar it's almost the rarest yeah, yeah yeah so with the headstock snapped off this thing's worth a couple grand and i went hmm maybe it's music like maybe maybe i should take this as a sign maybe i mean it's got to be I've never seen the guy again, not once. The, this this guy that was outside that he's he's I've and I've I've went to that auto parts store a million times since then. I've I've been in Enola. I live in that area. I've never seen him, and uh, but that sparked everything. Then I got obsessed uh, and I started practicing like four hours a day for for like six months. I go to Wally's open mic uh, every week down there. Johnny Joe's in Mechanicsburg, and I'd get up there and torture people with my horrible guitar playing. Uh, I had a good singing bass at the time, which got me through, I think, uh, gave me a little bit more leeway. But so at the end of all this to say that, you know, Wally got sick and then I filled in for him. And then literally it was like 2019, I played, I think a hundred shows, 2020, even with the pandemic and everything, I still ended up playing like almost 150 shows. Oh, wow. uh, so it's, it's, and I mean, last year in June of last year, I quit my job to do this full time. I'm sorry, <laughs> not last year in 2021. <clears throat> and, uh, and I mean, it's, it's crazy. Um, the support that I've had <clears throat> through all, through all the time here uh, it has been unwavering. Um, people love it. And, and I love performing. So that's awesome. Yeah. Who do you think uh, band wise inspires you the most? Oh, man. That's so I'm all over the place when it comes to music. I, I listen to so many things. Uh, like I like gangster rap sometimes. <laughs> right. Uh, and I still, I also like, I'm obsessed with this band, Mount Joy, right now. Um, Mount Joy is, is, one of these awesome like newer bands that not too many people know about um that they're just putting out such good music you know in my opinion and music is super subject subjective right you know so so but i like mount joy i like this band called crystal skulls uh it's another little underground band so i think i've heard that before from a previous guest oh, okay Actually, really yeah they're, they're they're phenomenal um um and then uh yeah, I mean, there's there's so many all over the map. Um, 
Leon Bridges has been somebody recently that I've really been turned on to this band called Krungbin. Uh, but I mean, that's one of the problems that I have with my original music though, mm. is I am not pigeon held to one genre. I don't, I don't, I'm like my first album has like two reggae songs, a rock song, a jazz song. And, and I don't even know what you would call the other one, a blues song. And, and the new album has like four pop songs and like, it's got, it's, it's so it's, it, it, it's nice for me to have that flexibility, but it, it's not great for, for marketing sometimes. You right. Know? Why do you, why do you, why are you all over the place? Do you think? I think it's because I don't, I think part of it has to do with the different, like we were talking about earlier about the different emotions that, that music can invoke, you know, mm-hmm. um, there's a specific spot in my life for heavy metal. Right. And it's at the gym. Or it's uh, you know whenever I'm angry, uh, heavy metal fits right in that slot. It's it's like, it's like the perfect slot for it. But you know, heavy metal isn't great for uh, for the drive home from the gig or like the or like Sunday morning drive. <laughs> Sunday, or, yeah. yeah, it just doesn't make sense. So, uh, so, but that's why I think I'm kind of all over the map. Is is I use music as a tool, as a as a as a function in my life to yeah, kind of segue me into different areas, you know? And I, and, and, and I think that you can't do that if you just listen to one genre of music. I don't, mm. I don't think that that's achievable. Um, if you just listen to today's country, uh, I don't know what kind of gamut of emotions you're going through, but I think most of them are probably going to be a little sad and then, yeah. <laughs> and then very happy. And I don't think that there's really much of it in between. Uh, no, not really. Yeah. So, uh, so that's, <clears throat> that, and and you know being versatile and and djing all those years exposed me to so much different music mm. that now i have this catalog in my head and i'm like i can't you know just just i don't i don't want to be pigeon held to certain things you know right so what is the songwriting process for you uh, you came out with your first album uh two years ago three years ago now, three years yeah 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 what was it what was it was that an acclimation of years or was that just since you started in 2018? That was just since I started. Yeah. Yeah. And there was one song that I really wanted to put out. Um, and then the rest of the album was just kind of when I got in the studio, I had like 10 tracks and I was like, five of these are worthy of recording. The other five are not done, you know, and those will be on the new album now, but, but the writing process for me was, finding something that i felt Mm. so that's why it's so hard for me to write original sometimes is you know sometimes i don't feel like i have much to say you know what i mean and if i don't have something to say i'm not gonna i don't want to i don't want to waste people's time you know what i mean uh so so the 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 five tracks that ended up on the album they were all wrote probably within six months of that of recording and uh the one that i was really really wanted to get out was not ready and Mm. not ready was a a track about me quitting smoking that's all it was about but it turned into something for so many people uh like whenever i released it people are like wow like this is you know this means this to me this means that to me and that's when i realized i was like okay yeah like i i recorded it and put it out by myself and with kevin uh, Kevin Nelson's my like producer and he, he does all my albums. Um, and he's, a he was a mastermind with the way that he recorded this thing, uh, because it, it enveloped all that emotion and it's just me and my guitar in a room with a ribbon mic and a couple of, and that's it. And it's, I mean, there's barely anything added to it. So, so that was, uh, that was the song I wanted to get out to everybody. And that's the one I think still to this day that has probably the most like raw emotion mm. because I really felt like I was in these, these chains. I was just kind of constricted and held and, and literally it just felt like the whole world changed for me whenever, whenever I was able to just finally kick it. And, uh, and it just, it, the empowerment that I felt from that came through, I think in this, in this, in that song. So well, with that said, we actually have it lined up. So let's give it a listen. 
This is not ready by Dave Gates. Got a hold on me that I can't seem to break You get more of me with every hit I take But I was done with you, but you came back around Took the walls built and burned them to the ground But I'm not ready to give in to you or let you control me the way that you do I've seen what you offer And it's always the same One minute of pleasure For a lifetime of pain This time This time I'm done with you Yes, I'll go I'll go from ashes to being new Taste you in the morning and crave you late at night Gave you everything without even a fight I snuff you out and then I take you in again it's always me who ends up suffering in the end Cause I'm not ready to give in to you Or let you control me the way that you do And I've seen what you offer And it's always the same One minute of pleasure For a lifetime of pain And I I'm so done with you Yeah, this time I'll go from ashes to be new Summer clothes reminds me you were here And in my darkest times you'll always reappear One day I'll break the chains that you have always held or I will light the match and send myself to hell Cause I'm not ready to give in to you or let you control me the way that you do and i've seen what you offer and it's always the same one minute of pleasure for a lifetime of pain but this time this time i'm done with you Yes, I've gone, I've gone from ashes to being new. And that was not ready. And you mentioned that uh, live, you do it completely differently now. Yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, different chord structure. Um, and I also, um, I changed the timing of it. I made it a little bit quicker. Uh, at the time, whenever I recorded that, I was like, have to be just directly on with each lyric has to be fit into that perfect slot in the timing. And now it's a little bit more fluid. It's just kind of how I feel it um, at, in the moment. And I would say that anybody who's come out to see me knows that I pretty much just every song that I play is a little different from show to show. I don't think I've ever played anything exactly the same. As it should be. Right? Yeah. 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 Like it's not, I, I don't, I, I start with a blueprint and then I, I kind of work my way around it. So that's, that kind of bleeds into my music too. My music changes all the time. 
I was gonna say, do you think you'd ever uh, re-release that in like a new version or? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, there's actually a a full band version of that song on YouTube um, that that Kevin and I recorded. Kevin played all the other parts. I just sang it and played some guitar on it. Um, but he played everything else, the drums and the bass and and and, and all. I think there's even keys in there. It's that's cool. So, uh, but that's you know it, that's a little known thing i guess i don't i don't talk about that too much but yeah <laughs> yeah I, I forgot about it until now um but that's uh that's something i would definitely want to re-release in the, in the future um with the newer ver i you know with a newer version let's put it that way <laughs> i was gonna say i like the new one better but i think i like them both the same they're just different so. yeah that's always good I, I like uh to relate to that i had a worship song that i i wrote and i like i'm i'm classically trained Okay. So I really enjoyed the sound of an orchestra. I got you. And I really like sounds of orchestra in places sounds of orchestras are not typically heard. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, well, because it's fun. Yeah. You know, why why not have a whole orchestra to your worship song? Right. right? Why not? Right. Bach did it. Why can't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, if it's available. Right? If it's available, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, and, and if we had the technology of MIDI's. Yeah. Why not do it? Yeah. And um, so I did that, and then uh. For my recital here, uh, we don't. I don't know if you know this area, but there's a, a lack of orchestras around here. Oh, okay. No, I um, didn't know that. Okay. Well, for for a, a simple person like me to use, at I least. Got you. And uh, we had we had to do a worship set, but the worship set was good. Oh, really I got you. Freaking good. That's awesome. And so I was like, hmm, <laughs> which one do I like more? <laughs> I was like, why not both? Yeah, and yeah. I th- combine them. Uh, well, just to have both of them, and yeah. just say, you know, just say, hey, this is this is what it's would sound in a live worship contemporary setting, and here's what it would sound like if if I had all the money in the world. Very nice, right? By a traveling orchestra, by a traveling orchestra, <laughs> right? And I, I feel like I feel like people are like, no, I have to release one song only one way. I'm like, should it have to be like that? No, no. Do what no. you want with your music. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I get a lot of people that that that. Let's put it this way: if if music purists come out to my show, <laughs> they're going to be very angry because most of the time I don't play the song in the key it was wrote in. I don't play it in the pattern it was wrote in. I don't. Uh, there's some songs. I, I mean, I cover like uh, "Regulators" by Warren G and Nate Dogg. It's like a '90s hip hop song. Um, I don't know how you're supposed to play that on acoustic, but right, I do, yeah. uh, you know, and, and, and I just heard of somebody else that does it in Nashville. Uh, just yes. Like two days ago, I had a guy say, you're the only other person I've ever heard play regulators. And I was like, Oh, that's cool, man. The only other. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess he, he was like, I heard a guy in Nashville. I'm like, all right, man. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so, I mean, I play such off the wall stuff. Uh, like 311, um, some of their songs that aren't meant for acoustic, um, uh, like Beautiful Disaster is not easy on acoustic, right. but I piece it together. So so it's all about adapting, yeah, adapting music to what what you feel it should be, mm-hmm. maybe. I don't know. I, I, music peers would be like, he missed this. That's not how it gets, you know. Yeah, music peers are not fun people, and that's why you don't see them out at shows. It's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tommy B-, B and I were talking about it a little bit, and and um, he he has the same sentiment. Uh, he said his dad. I, don't know, I think he mentioned it on here. His dad gave him the advice before that. You know, if if a musician is in the crowd and he's mean mugging you because you're not playing it right, he might just be angry that he's not up there playing. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's you, the you one know, advice that they gave. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and I, and I feel that way too. There's people that feel what I'm doing and there's people that don't and music with it being subjective. I don't ever take it personally. Yeah, like, you shouldn't. Yeah. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, I mean, hopefully I could do something else that you like, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. If you don't like it, wait three minutes. <laughs> yeah. Wait three minutes. Exactly. Exactly. Request a song. And that's something that I rely off of. I mean, I play, I think my song catalog's like 4,000. Oh, wow. So yeah. And it's, I, I play everything from the fifties till now. Play like, Freebird. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Jason Carson. He was on here and he said, uh, yeah, whenever they 
ask for free bird. He waits till they leave. And then he plays, yeah. he plays free bird. <laughs> uh, I've, I've the same sentiment. I had a guy yell out free bird and that happens of course at every show. Right? Oh, well, of course it has to, it like, has to, or, or else something's wrong. Yeah. Unless they're not paying the attention breaks. at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and, and I, I have an adapted way that I play free bird mm. that makes other people that hate free bird like, like free bird. That's awesome. So I just, I reggae it up just a tad, you know, <laughs> speaking of free bird, I, I have to mention this because it's such an awesome lineup coming at uh, May 19th. Leonard Skinner, not only Leonard Skinner, but the Marshall Tucker Band are coming to the Poconos. Really? Yeah. Wow. And our great friend, uh, the Jessica, uh, Jessica Zimmerman Band. Yeah. The Jess Zimmerman Band. They're phenomenal. Are also playing that as well. Wow. So shout out to them and kudos to them for getting on that lineup. Her band is incredible. Oh, her band is incredible. And I think they have yeah. new stuff coming out this yeah. year. Yeah. And so stay tuned for the, for them. Go check out the Justin Roman band. They're incredible work. I think just won a Josie Award for, I think, a song. I can't remember exactly. I'm pretty sure. It was like Song of the Year. Song of the Year, something like that. Yeah. 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 So go check out what they're doing. But yeah, I just had to mention that Leonard Skinner and the Marshall Tucker band are coming to Pennsylvania oh, yeah. for one night. And so if you're ever going to go to a, a Southern rock concert, it's going to be, you know, the top two uh, Southern rock bands of their respective generations. Yeah. And in the, in the Poconos. In right? the Poconos, yeah, in the middle yeah. of nowhere. Right. It's, yeah. It's perfect. That's, that's great. It's going to be gonna great. Be, yeah. The acoustics are probably going to be incredible wherever they play. So <laughs> right. they have great places up there. So be sure to check that out. There you go. Um, past that, we, uh, you have other songs on that uh, first album that we have here devil you yeah. want to talk about that yeah so so devil's a storytelling song and i wasn't sure whether to include it on the album or not um until kevin would kind of push me on it my brother was like wow he's like if you listen to the lyrics of that it tells a story and and devil just kind of came out of me thinking of a story in my head mm. i was making i was like uh you know it's really, it's like a descriptor of, of three different people. And one of them being me. So it's a descriptor of like a two fake scenarios. And then, and then I kind of wrap it all up with the third verse and, and kind of assume the role that I'm supposed to be in, in the song. And, uh, one of the, here's a fun kind of inside thing at the beginning of the song, you hear some stuff fall. <laughs> right and and we just kevin decided to keep this in in the studio recording so it's like you hear something tumble and then you hear this whistle and the whistle is actually my bass player jeremy it's actually him breathing into a, a ribbon microphone uh he's got a little bit of a he had a little bit of a nasal whistle that day and you can hear this whistle in the background and it's him breathing uh after this stuff falls and Kevin kept it in and I'm like, I like that being in there. It's kind of interesting. It's like a weird way to start the song. So, uh, but this is one of, one of the tracks. Um, I think it's the only one you have today that has like anything besides me and my guitar. So mm -hmm. this is me and Jeremy was playing an upright bass in this song. So that's nice. This is devil by Dave Gates. Let me tell you about this girl I know Eyes are black as night, her skin is so cold She's a devil She just bought me a drink She says that I can have whatever I like Don't you even think about your wife She's the devil She's a holding you back and if you leave with me, you'll never have to deal with that. See, it did I like it just to where I am. She said, you're not meant to be a businessman. Walking around every day in three-piece suits. But underneath it all, you're howling at the moon. Let me tell you about this guy I met 
Kill the family with his record that he's a devil. And he's a stealer of souls. Left the bar around at 2 a.m. Drove it on into a minivan. He's the devil. Only one who lived. They gave the death penalty to a man without a soul to give. Yeah, the family showed up at the prison at nine to see them take the life of the one who survived. And when they asked him for his very last words, he looked at the family and said, I'm cursed. my last song and get off of the stage sitting at the bar and ready to play she's a devil and she's a calling my name she says just have a seat and take a drink forget it all don't even have to think she's the devil and she's making some sense and the more that I listen, I know it's going to be my end. I get too messed up on whiskey and wine. It, it leads to trouble almost every time. Tonight will be different. Just mark my words and watch how my Corvette handles these turns. I'm the devil, and I got no soul. And that was Devil by Dave Gates. What a, what a cool little fun, uh, bumpy tune. Yeah, yeah, Jeremy, uh, we didn't have anything wrote. So, like, whenever I went in and recorded, I recorded the main part of it, and then Jeremy uh, came in and he's like, how's this sound? Boom, 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 boom. I'm like, that sounds incredible. Part, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, that's just perfect. All right. Yeah, man. Thank you. So, uh, but, Jer you know, Jeremy Sheriff, shout out to him. He's uh, he's literally probably one of the best bass players that I know. I mean, that's a hard... I've, I've seen a bunch of them and he's there. I've never seen him not be able to play something. That's fair. So <laughs> I've got, I, uh, I haven't run the show a while. I, I know a few good bass players. Really good. Uh, shout out to Liam Galliano and Henry, Henry Dvorak. Uh, really great, really great <laughs> bass players in the area that know that uh, that are awesome. Um, and we were talking about the scene earlier, how how robust it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's it's absolutely crazy. I, I was telling Corey that, like, my, you know, seeing uh, names on the signs that I've never seen before. Whenever I'm at these venues, or like, you know, just just getting out there and people mentioning people that I haven't heard of. And I'm like, I'm immersed in the scene. And, yeah, and for five years, five dude, years, 200 plus shows now. You, oh, uh, like I'm that? at like a little bit over 600. Yeah. So, well, I'm in per year. Oh, per year. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Like I, I think this year I've like, I dialed it back just a tad this year because last year was crazy. Uh, I was doing a lot of times I was doing like four shows throughout the week and then like two on Saturday, one on Sunday. <laughs> And I did that for four months straight, three and a half months straight. Wow. Yeah. It just like destroyed my voice. I had like nodules. I'm like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. this is not how it's supposed to go. No. <laughs> but, but the fact that you're able to do that. That's, that's the th crazy thing about the scene is if you're, you know, if you're not even if you're good, if you're dedicated, dedicated. Yeah. If you're persistent, a pers yeah, there you go. Persistent. If you're persistent and and consistent and you show up and you do what you can at each show there are places for you to play every night of the week every yeah. night yeah and all there's the... no barrier to entry <laughs> yeah especially if you just ask right oh that's the that's the best thing you could do yeah yeah and the worst thing they can say is no that's it that's, that's literally it. it 
there was a place I wanted to play in Delaware for, for forever. And I pestered them. I just, I kept pestering the guy. He wouldn't answer me. So I just kept, and this isn't always the case. Sometimes it doesn't work out well, but I kept pestering him until he was like, Hey, if I give you a date, will it shut you up? <sighs> and I was like, yes, yes. That's all I want. I just oh, want right. one try, man. And, uh, you know, I got in there and played and now I'm, I'm regular rotation down there. And that was all it took. I just had to pester him like crazy. So (laughs) sometimes it it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you get a nasty message back. (laughs) Hey, well, that's okay. Yeah. I'll take a no. You weren't going to get in anyway. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. And sometimes I had to pester my guests. (laughs) Oh, Oh, I bet. I bet. Musicians, you know how it is with musicians. It's like herding cats. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 It's a, it's a gaggle of misfits 99% of the time. Absolutely. And that's what makes the music industry fun and unfun. Unfun. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's funny. (laughs) So you have a a new track out EP or album coming out soon. Is there a, is there a theme to that or is it like Mm. just a collection of songs? It's a it's a bit of a collection. There's a there's some songs on there. Um, like my girlfriend Steph, uh, she was kind of like a, a muse for me um, when I met her, and like through us developing our relationship uh, in the early stages. You know, it, it just gave me tons of inspiration to write. Mm. You know, the problem was every single song was a love song, like every <laughs> single one. And I'm like, oh my god, like I, I don't want to put like. This is what am I gonna do? This is gonna be like a here's a Valentine's Day record. Anybody want to put this on? You can play it front to back on Valentine's Day, and that's it. So uh, that's it. <laughs> that's it. So uh, so so I mean, there's a couple songs on there. There's a lot of songs on there about her. Um, there's a lot of songs on there about like life and progressing and the changes that I've gone through, going from. You know, I was a welder and, and a landscaper for 17 years. Mm-hmm. So, like, going from that to playing music every day uh, for a living is, is it's such a drastic difference because prior to 2018, you never would have caught me going, ah, yeah, I'm going to be a musician one day. <laughs> like, it's so recent in my life. So all those, you know, Big change brings about big emotions, you Mm -hmm. know? So any drastic change in your life is a good time to write music, no matter what it is. If it's bad, if it's good. Oh, yeah. And that's kind of like the the new album is just a collection of all the emotions I've been feeling through through the years here. And I I wanted to shout out, uh, before we continue down that that thought path, uh, Alex Danilla is putting out a charity album uh, this Valentine's Day. Oh, all about cool. love songs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, if you have a love song that you would like to get out to an album that is solely for charity, it's for uh, animals that are abused and stuff like that. Oh, wow! So it's it's going out to charities that help help with that uh, that uh, area of uh, problem. And you can sh- reach out to Alex Danilla. I don't know if you know Alex Danilla no, or not. No, I'm um, going to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, make sure you look him up on Facebook, alexdanilla.com. I, I think that's his uh, website. I, if not, I'm gonna, it's going to be in the comments below. Be sure to submit your love songs to to that great cause. That sounds incredible. Anything to help pets, man. They can't help themselves. Uh, right. I'm a pet lover. I get two dogs at home, and they're, you know, they're my world. So, <laughs> <clears throat> so this is home. Why is it called home? Is is it is that just what you chose for your collection of songs, or do you feel at home now? Man, so this song has a big meaning. I guess mm-hmm. this is this was solely written about about my girlfriend, um, and it was off of a conversation that we had, and we were kind of talking about you know it was in the early stages, so we were kind of going through everything we'd been through. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? At that point in our lives, like this relationship and that sucked and this wasn't good. You know what I mean? Like all the things we got wrong, right? You're just trying to figure out, okay, where are our problems? Where are our blind you spots got at? Yeah. You got it. Yep. And, and I felt myself like feeling super sorry for her. Mm. Just that she had to go through all of that. You know what I mean? And, and just to, <clears throat> just to be where she's at now. And after like in the moment, I felt super, super sorry. After that, 
I kind of thought about it a little bit. And I thought about how thankful I was that she went through all that. Not because she had to go through it. Because that's how that's why she is now. It formed her. Yeah. yeah. And 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 I mean flaws and and positive things. It it yeah. bring it it shapes you into who you are. Makes you a human. You got it. But I told her, you know, even for me going through and then I kind of turned it on myself and, and I said, you know, for me, it's I'm glad I went through everything I did in my life because I wouldn't appreciate what I have now. Mm-hmm. I just wouldn't. It, you know, everything's perspective. And and I have a broad perspective over over the years of my life of not doing the right things a lot. Like a lot, a lot. As, as many times as I could. Um, so it's, it, you know, I'm still thankful. I wouldn't take any of it back because it, 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 it just brought me to such a, when I quit my job and I started music, I did it because I felt confident that I could do it. And I probably wouldn't have that confidence if I tapped out early in all the other aspects of my life. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, everything that uh, you are now has been a culmination. A culmination, yeah. there it is, there was the word, yeah, of what, what you've gone through. Yeah. Just, uh, I talk about it a little bit on the podcast, but if I lost my mother, I wouldn't be where I am now. I wouldn't be a musician. You got it. Yeah. I that's it's steered that's steered me away from uh one I, w- I wanted to be a scientist and zookeeper. Oh wow! Which was you know completely out of left field is this music? Well, not really. I was it was either music or or science. Okay. And she was a science teacher. Her dying cut me off of science. Uh, right. I got you. Yep. Uh, and then just shoved me and kicked me towards music and here i am doing all of this cool stuff yeah as a uh, granted it would be really cool to work with your mom <laughs> oh yeah 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 true but, true yeah but i'm really glad i get to do this yeah so yeah god awful situation uh she died of a heart attack at 40 oh my dad passed at 51 of a heart attack so and it's relatively young yeah. for uh, a heart attack at least yeah and uh so sad situation Happy it happened, and yeah. uh, that and uh, well, there's also the whole point of the she donated her body to science, and the scientists couldn't take any part of her body because they were so damaged from drinking alcohol and so much more. Uh, so she would have been in just so much pain otherwise. I got you. So yeah. and she went away in her sleep. So it was like one of the best possible wow ways, right? Yeah. yeah. So it, it's crazy how all of these things in our life, yeah, sad. It's but they, a, they make us who we are. It's, it's, yeah, if you don't have those moments, you don't have those who to are reflect you? on and grow from. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. With this, this is home. Yeah. This is the title track. And yeah. This is a debut uh, here listening of, of the track, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't, uh, I just got the master of it the other day, like last week from Kevin. And we, we don't have the album out yet, but this is, this will, uh, this is the first listen, I think of the, the title track anywhere. Um, and there's actually, I, I just wanted to bring a little bit of attention. The last line of the song starts out with, uh, you know, how don't you know that you're so pretty mm. because it, you know, the whole song is talking about how, she's spent all that time going through those things and how I'm happy that she went through them in a certain way. Yeah. In a certain way, in a certain way, I'm happy that she went through them. But from now on, she doesn't have to worry about where she is because like wherever we are is home, Mm. you know, and, and she can feel safe there and, and taken care of. And like, um, she doesn't have to worry anymore. And, and, and that last line, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's dumbfounding me. How, how she looks at herself sometimes. She's like, I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like this. And I'm like, I wouldn't change anything. Right. Like, what is wrong? Like, that's, and, and that's why, and I, the, you know, when I was writing the song, that line always made me chuckle. So I was like, all right, we're keeping it in. So, so just a little backstory on it. Well, with that said, this is Home by Dave Gates. How'd you get so pretty? You moved out of that city to find a place that you could call your home. Did 
you say goodbye to all your friends and hit the road alone. Just making amends for all the wrongs you were doing to your soul. Did you get lost on the back road and did you find a place to hide? Did you get lost in the sorrow? Did you suffer through the night? My arms are meant to hold you and you'll never be alone. It's in my arms, baby, you always have a home. No, we spent time putting up them walls And I hate to tell you, babe A wrecking ball, yeah, I'm breaking you down Every time you're laughing with me Sit back, relax, ease your mind Yeah, I promise you, babe We'll have a hell of a time Yeah, it's me and you My ride or die anyway Get lost on some back roads and let's find a place to drive. And you stay till tomorrow. I need you here tonight. My arms are meant to hold you and you'll never be alone. It's in my arms, baby. You always have a home. Knew from the moment I saw your face You were my saving angel My amazing grace Don't you know that you're so pretty I'm glad you moved out of that city and found the place we could call our home Glad you said goodbye All those friends Hit the road alone Making amends For all the wrongs You were doing to your soul Let's get lost on some back roads And let's find a place to drive you stay till tomorrow, I need you here tonight. My arms are meant to hold you, and you'll never be alone. It's in my arms, baby, you'll always have a home. It's in my arms, baby. You always have a home. And that is Home by Dave Yates. When is that album coming out? Do you know? Uh, I don't have an official release yet, but it'll probably be, uh, I would say probably summer of this year. So stay tuned for that. Yeah. Uh, now we're going to move on. We're running out of our time. So we're going to run on to some general questions that I like all of our guests. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments and we'll get around to them. First up, what is one of the funniest or worst things that ever happened to you on a gig? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so one of the, well, I would say one of the worst things, I guess, recently uh, was was at Hook and Flask in Carlisle. It's a distillery down there. Uh, I was playing there in December, and I uh, they have a, their stage is about three feet wide or so it's a galley stage so it's mm. really long but it's very narrow and the crowd sits right underneath you basically on either side and uh i record all my sets so i have a little camera set up in the corner that just kind of checks everything out and and uh i didn't notice it at the time but as i was playing throughout the three hour show i don't normally take too many breaks uh maybe one if that and i uh 
didn't notice it, but I was moving my microphone, staying closer and closer to the edge of the stage as I was singing. Oh no! I kept like bumping it with my beak, right? Just uh, just a bunch of times, and uh, and there was a table sitting right in the front row, and I'm in the middle of playing a song, and I bump it, and the mic stand and goes. everything goes off the stage. Oh no! It and it, I mean I'm playing guitar, so I can, I, I can't even grab it. Uh, so it just goes, and I'm watching this lady's face in the front row, and it's coming right at her. It hits the table, spills water all over everybody, and I'm still playing because I, I try not to. I'm like, I don't care what happens. I just want to keep the music going. So, so I'm still playing, and the guy that's sitting at the table gets up and puts my mic stand back on the stage and like back up in front of me, and I just keep playing the song while they're kind of cleaning up the mayhem that I just <laughs> unleashed on that front table. Um, and I was like, there's no way these people are ever going to come back to one of my shows, but they were actually at hook and flask, uh, this week, whenever I played there last weekend. So, um, so they came back, but that's probably one of the worst things that's ever happened to me is I, I watched the fear in her eyes. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, and I was and so it worried happened in slow motion. Too. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like from eight feet, can an, can an SM 58 knock somebody well, yeah. out? I'm like, I'm pretty sure it can. I think it's at velocity to, it's going to take her out um but it just missed her so uh so yeah i mean God, that's, that's so funny that was <laughs> awful in this situation yeah. but really funny to look back on yeah and i have the video uh of it so i'm gonna release that at some i have it clipped out at my house i just haven't released it yet but i have the video of that and you could see it like time lapse just working its way to the front <laughs> and then all of a sudden so it just funny. dumps off the stage so yeah, you should you should make it that time lapse of it just slowly going and then at the moment Slow it down. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just see everything fly. Yeah, it's incredible. So, uh, but that's probably the worst thing, man, if I was going to say. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Um, and funny. Yeah. 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 Because, well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, oh, you know, that stuff happens all the time. You, don't, you just don't realize it. And it's, 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 like, a, it's like a Charlie Chaplin short right, right. there. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. So, uh, what is. What is one of the best pieces of advice anyone's ever given you in regards to music mm. or life in general? Whatever. Yeah. I mean, just to do it, mm. I guess would be literally, it doesn't matter. Like Andy, Andy Smith, when I was going to those open mics at the beginning, Andy Smith um, and Wally and Colt Wilbur and all those guys were very instrumental in keeping me going. Because I would get up there and, I mean, my voice was okay. My guitar playing was terrible. And I would torture these people. And they're like, all right, man. Like, it's, you know, they, they saw something that I didn't see at the time. And they just said, you know, keep going. Keep doing it. Keep going. Push it. You know. And, and literally, that's helped me in like a million different ways. Because inaction is it's the complete opposite of what you want to do. Yes. If you're not doing anything with your life, it's probably not a, a good life to live. You're not. Yeah. Just. Yeah. yeah. You can feel fulfilled, but you have to start moving in that direction. And yeah. <laughs> it, even I mean, and this is like in a literal sense, even like getting up out of bed or taking a shower or, yeah, you know, like literally doing the bare minimum for yourself. Yes. Uh, is way better than doing absolutely zero things yeah you start your day with a win that's that 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 lieutenant commander that said you know do it like get up make your bed yeah make your bed <laughs> if you make your bed you've already won for the day you did something you, you did started something. by doing something yeah so just do something do it <laughs> yeah and uh this podcast wouldn't have been started if someone didn't tell me just to do it. Just uh, do it. Shout yeah. out to Bjorn Jacobson who who s sat me down at the Dirty Old Tavern. Okay. Down there, uh, yeah. down in, in Lancaster City, and said, "And what? Just do it. Start." That's awesome. And what I great did. Great advice. Yeah. Yeah. Just start, and you know, work out because you can come up with so many reasons of why not to. A hundred percent. And oh, this could be better, or this could be better. It doesn't matter start yeah just start <laughs> figure and, and, it out on the way yeah if you're messing if you're not starting in the right way that doesn't matter you'll figure it out and you're going like just starting is going to give you the opportunity to figure out what you need to do differently exactly <laughs> and so. often oftentimes what you think is gonna is gonna happen ain't gonna happen nope. and it's not gonna way that it's it should have happened to begin with right exactly yeah so you got it man. just do it yeah um one last thing what is one of your most memorable lessons that you've learned 
Hmm. Um, just to be super thankful, right? Mm -hmm. Be grateful, be thankful for what I do have. You know, it's easy to get angry if you're, you know, you could find, yeah, like you said, you could find a million reasons to not do something. You could find a million reasons to get angry every yes. day. Like I could find, I could feel slighted by this venue because they won't answer. I could feel, you know, Someone didn't like my post. Someone didn't like my post. Yeah, yeah. This didn't get enough likes. Uh, you know, I didn't get nominated for this or, or I didn't that. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like I could get I could get all burned out on that stuff, but at the end of the day, I get to make noise for a living. <laughs> that's all I do. That's all I do. That's it. I just make noise. And then people go, Wow, that's a nice noise. Uh <laughs> wow, that's a nice noise. Yeah, yeah, nice noise. Or they go, Oh, I hate that noise. And, and it either way. I still, I get to do that. Um, and so that helps, that helps me. That That's a lesson I learned over time to help me in all aspects of my life, but especially with music is like, it's you, you can be, you can, your mindset really dictates your entire life. Yeah, it does. Because I, I go through the same situations that other musicians do and we can have two completely different reactions. And and it really changes the trajectory of what you're doing. Yeah. So so, yeah. I mean, that's something that was a very hard lesson for me to learn because I always thought that I had it really bad and that life was terrible. And then my life got terrible. Mm. And then I was like, oh, oh, okay, yeah, no. Whenever I was complaining, but that wasn't this. That wasn't yeah. That wasn't six minutes of silence on a stand up stage in Baltimore. You know, right, yeah, I've never that that wasn't bad. Yeah, that'd be terrifying. Yeah, it's, just, it's just terrible. <laughs> yeah, knowing the people reject you, like I'm like, yeah, not funny. Okay, great, awesome. You guys confirmed it for me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, great. But uh, but that's you know, and then just to use that to be grateful for the moments that aren't that. You know what I mean? And that's most of my life now. So I think that that's probably the biggest thing. That's the biggest lesson I've ever learned is just to be thankful and grateful for what I have. And uh, I'll add on to that. Don't let things, like you said, don't let things uh, drag you down. You can mess up a song. Uh, just don't worry about it. Because first off, those people probably didn't realize that. No. Uh, you're the biggest critic of yourself in that room. And uh, <clears throat> if you focus on that mistake, you're going to make it a lot more. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. You'll just continually make mistakes. Yeah. And it'll get progressively worse and worse and worse. And yeah. the best, uh, the best answer to, oh, great job tonight is thank you. Thank you. Don't ever say anything else. Yep. Don't don't uh, let them make uh, you know. Don't say, "Oh, I did this wrong." Did that. I've done? I made that mistake plenty. Of say, times. So did I. Yeah, and I won't do it again because it's lost me. People that you know thought I did a really good job, and they're right. like, "Oh, well, he said he did this one." Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, just say thank you. That's all you have to do. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. Thanks yep. for being here. I appreciate your your time. Uh, yeah, and uh, you can check me out at this website where can people find you at very cool uh at so my website's uh davegates.org.org uh all my tour dates and 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 original music and my cover song list so the songs that i play are listed on there as well there's like 2000 that are on that website so that way there are people at my shows i'll direct them to my website for request ideas mm. and then they could just have that and then i have little pen and papers so they can write it down and i let the audience dictate the show so um, so davegates.org for the website, uh, D gates for life, um, on Instagram and, uh, Dave Gates music on everything else, uh, YouTube channel, every, everything's Dave Gates music. So what are some upcoming shows that you have in the area? Uh, this weekend I'm playing Friday. I'm at the circle club in Carlisle. That's a members only club. Uh, sorry if you're not a <laughs> member, uh, but if you are, I'll see you there. Um, and then, uh, Saturday I'm playing at Benina's Creek winery. That's in Clingerstown, PA. That's their Valentine's event. So they have a lot of things going on there. Um, and then Sunday I'll be at the core theater, uh, at Jack's Hard Cider in Gettysburg for Gettysburg Rocks. I'll be opening up the show Sunday Sunday afternoon at noon uh, with like a 50-minute music set in the one of the coolest theaters in the area there in Gettysburg. So And then you can catch that right before the Super Bowl. Right before the Super so you got enough time to see me and like four other acts, and it all benefits pediatric cancer research. Oh, wow. So all the, all the musicians donate their time. There's like a ton of venues. So it's a, it, an incredible event. And you know, I play it year after year, and I couldn't – 
I couldn't support them more. That's so. more important than the Super Bowl. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you still have time. You can fit the Super Bowl into it. So. That's awesome. Uh, you can check us out. Well, this is the Story Podcast. My name is Corey Rosen. You can find out more about me and the stuff that I do at CoreyRosenProductions.com. That's C-O-R-Y-R-O-S-E-N Productions.com. You find out more about me, the work I'm doing currently, the work I've done in the past, the guests that I'm having on, that I've had on, all is there and we have some new merchandise from our we had our first 50 guest merchandise and now we have moved on to our 51 through 100 guests That's so awesome, man. some great names uh like daryl davis plunder and lightning um i wish i had all of these memorized i do not but there are some really great names on there so if you were on the show and you were in that timeline you get that merchandise wear it proudly i'd appreciate it uh Upcoming this Saturday, we have Kevin Gannon. He runs this awesome uh, non nonprofit called Musicians Bedside Manor, where he has musicians come into those. It's music to the immobile. That's the idea. Wow. Okay. Uh, Very cool. So he brings musicians into like nursing homes or uh, you know retirement homes, places that people can't get up and go to a show. Yeah, that's awesome. And he ha- he comes in and uh, plays. Or he has musicians play music for them, and it's one of the only times that those kind of people are able to listen to live music and really get really get a sense of you know their their childhood essentially. Oh yeah. Especially with those with disabilities like Alzheimer's or stuff like that. It's a good, it's a great work, great uh great thing he's doing. We get to hear about all of that, and he's also part of Mo Blues, which is a local blues band around here. So that's gonna be cool. Very cool. And then Sunday we got a uh, country artist Cody Ross Smith. He's got a lot of cool stuff going on, and we're going to hear about all of that Sunday. So be sure to tune in for that right before the Super Bowl and uh, right after your your stuff as well. I love it, man. I love it. All right. With all that said, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and we will see you guys later. Bye.